WWE Extreme Rules 2011 has just kicked off with a very long, almost 25 minute match between Randy Orton and CM Punk. A last man standing match. It featured a lot of reversals, a series of moves as well with those extreme items such as the staff and the chair as well as the steps coming into play. Nicely peppered throughout it because in a way they have to keep it somewhat tame but also it is extreme so as always we're looking for that ECW type uh, hostility and in this case there was enough of that there to keep me interested mm. good match to open up tonight's pay-per-view I think you know, we can kind of speculate what it would be and uh, this was a nice one to do and it didn't go too short didn't go too long was interesting enough to tie us over we didn't get bored at any point and uh, some nice spots actually that chair spot that they just showed on the replay I forgot about that one looked pretty nasty could do some serious da serious damage to the neck of the Viper and um, Punk again on the other hand you know I thought there was times there where he really had it in the bag you know he hit the GTS before Orton even managed to get his uh, infamous RKO locked in locked tight but again it was two RKOs for Punk in the end and the Viper reigns supreme and makes his imprint as he uh, joins the Smackdown roster. Absolutely, so important for Orton to go to Smackdown strong. After that RKO off the top rope, CM Punk succumbed. Of course, New Nexus not allowed to come down to ringside, but I you know, I did find it sort of plodding along, but not disinteresting. I liked everything I saw and it did keep my attention, which for a 25 minute match, I have to hand it to them that they certainly did uh, prove their point tonight. Punk always a strong worker, I always feel Orton is as well, and uh, pairing those two together, I wouldn't mind seeing it go forward, but of course Orton now on Smackdown. Mike, are you with us? Yeah, I am. How are you doing? Made We've just seen uh, Orton versus Punk, and uh, you're watching that pay-per-view live. So, uh, I suppose to go straight to you, your thoughts on that match as it's just transpired. Uh, very good opening match, definitely. Um, as you said, uh, it was like a 25-minute match. I mean, if all these matches, if there's only going to be like six of them, at least for right now on the card, all these are going to be uh, definitely going to be around 15 to 20 minutes for without a doubt. Um, for the opening match, though, yeah, it was a very good match. Very fluent. I mean, it, kind of slow for like maybe the first what minute or two minutes and then after that it just kick started off with the kendo sticks um outside the ring with the uh table the announce table that match yeah it was very very good um i thought when um orton or um cm punk put orton in between the chair like um when it was unfolded out and uh hit it against the the steel post i thought that was it and I'm pretty sure a lot of people, like, I, that actually got me, like, I actually went to, like, gas, I was like, holy shit, you never know with the neck and yeah. uh, all kinds of shit there. Um, a lot of yeah, high impact was stuff, wasn't there? A lot of stuff that was even A lot somewhat, of extreme stuff, extreme yeah. rules for a reason. Getting to dangerous, I think, but yeah, I, I suppose we can all give our mark out of five, if you like, for that. I would go with a solid three out of five, actually, what about you, Steve? I took the words out of my mouth, 3.0, I was going for... Just, just right. And Mike, yourself? Three, three or three and a half for that one. Thoughts on that one? Uh, a little bit surprising with the placement on the card, uh, but you know, as uh, I guess, as a blow off to a feud, which is kind of surprising that they're having the blow off in the manner that they are with with Orton jumping ship. I almost wonder if they're trying to sweep it under, not sweep it under the the rug a little bit, but kind of take a little bit of the attention away from it. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think I think Punk a little bit buried in this one. I have to say from what I saw, I don't know if uh, I suppose uh, at the end of the day, really putting Punk over, there was no real logic in it, was mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. I think Orton was the one that needed to benefit from that match tonight, and you know he did a good job. It wasn't like Punk was completely buried. He did get in a bit of offense, maybe not enough, but I think for Orton to go over definitely made sense. There's there's a little bit of a rumor circulating as well that um, you know the punk is looking at potentially taking some time off and he there's a contract offer on the table that he hasn't agreed to sign just yet so. Mm. Mm. 
Uh, what do you think about the coming matches? We're now seeing Seamus uh, head to the ring as we also have uh, Kofi Kingston. So is this one official? I think it is. Official uh, for the so US title. Yeah. That's, that's what's happening now. But other matches to come tonight, Phil. Of course, we have Miz, Morrison and Cena. Uh, who do you think is, is coming out on top in that one? I think uh, I think the Miz is going to retain. Um, I think with the fact that he's had the title for as long as he has, it makes no sense to change direction on that. I'm not necessarily as high on the Miz as they are, but I like continuity of points, mm. and so I think a little bit of continuity there is a good thing. Uh, what I'm really hoping to see, and I hope that the direction that they go, especially with a year to build Cena and The Rock. And I don't know if they want to, uh, I don't know if the ambition is to, to turn Cena pure heel, but I think if they could make a tweaking to his character, what I would do is have him become obsessed with his matchup with The Rock. And if he's a guy who's always been about hustle, loyalty, respect, takes on everyone, gets involved at any time, have him change his character slightly and start shying away from some of the contact. You know, he doesn't want to get hurt in the next year. He wants to make certain that this match happens. So maybe, you know, have him take some countouts, have him not truly heelish stuff, but stuff that the fans might not expect from him and not get behind so much. It, it was a good fight. I mean, a lot of extreme stuff coming into play. At least they're going extreme for this pay-per-view. I agree. Exactly. So uh, more matches to come. And right now, a surprise match added with Kofi, Kingston and Sheamus. Uh, who's coming out on top? Who's taking the US title? Do you think Sheamus is uh, going to hold on to it? Uh, if, if Sheamus going to keep it, bring the IC title or Raw. If Kofi's going to get it. Kobe's taking it to Raw with him. Exactly. Of course, Sheamus uh, moved to SmackDown, and, uh, you know, it is that kind of changeover again where the IC goes other places mm. while the US comes back to SmackDown. Extreme Rules continues apace, and Kofi Kingston has just uh, won the United States Championship. It's the end of the Sheamus US title gimmick that I liked so much. I liked how he was putting it over and those red, white, and blue tights as well. It all worked, but again, another gimmick ended for Sheamus. This match, though, very, very uh, rough and ready from the beginning. Sheamus almost reminiscent of those matches with Morrison, where he came in tough and absolute brawling, if you like, with Kofi. Kofi matching that as well with a lot of uh, high-impact spots, stuff from the top rope, and uh, usage of that table, of course, the most important point of the match which ended with the high spot of Kofi off the ropes and a win for uh, Kingston. A big win for Kofi Kingston as he takes the United States Championship back to Raw. Well, it didn't really r leave Raw. It was only a couple of days ago that, of course, Kofi was drafted over. But a good display from Kingston here tonight. I think his agility and athleticism definitely played a big part in his victory and taking that title uh, to Raw. Um, I wouldn't say this... I probably... I think Extreme Rules is probably a bit of an extreme name for this one. Aggressive Rules, I think, would be a bit more apt as uh, both of these guys turn it up big time. And uh, aside of Kofi, I don't think we've ever seen, really. He's really unleashing his fury. He must have really wanted that US title. But a good job and a nasty, nasty bump, I think, Seamus took there in the end. It's quite true. Kofi reminded me of his time with Randy Orton on Raw a couple of months back where he did bring it and it was a lot more aggressive than the SmackDown matches that you typically saw from Kofi. This is what I, I, I think a guy like Sheamus does uh, for people he takes into the ring because Morrison benefited exactly the same way uh, when those two were on pay-per-view. So I have to put over Sheamus in this one. He was losing, he was going down and it didn't. Uh, he didn't know sell you know no selling is the absolute worst thing you could do and uh he didn't do it he sold all the way for kingston i'm uh, excited about his future on smackdown i think yeah well he might come out of that kind of mid bracket and back up to the the top end and maybe we might see a feud with him and orton on smackdown for some sort of title deal if uh, that is to be the case overall with this one 
Um, I like the aggression of it. Uh, I think Kofi, for me, stood out more so than he normally does. Not the usual uh, array of moves that he normally pulls off. I think he uh, pushed it that little bit more here tonight at Extreme Rules and went a little bit extreme for uh, once in his life. So, out of... Uh, I don't know if we might think it's out of 10 or out of 5, but I'm sure it's out of 5. And uh, it is stars we're talking about. So with these two stars, I'd give this one... I'm going to go 3.5 on this. Solid. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it was good. It was enjoyable. And now, of course, we see our truth backstage giving out about something. We're going to go to Micah on that. A surprise edition here tonight as uh, we've seen Kofi Kingston become the United States champion. Are you surprised? <laughs> Uh, surprised they put a match in because I, you know, who knows if they're gonna do either U.S. title or the um, IC title. Apparently, they went with the U.S. And uh, as soon as I saw Kofi Kingston comes out, or came out, I'm like, he's winning, no doubt. They got to put that title back on Raw. It was an obvious win, an obvious choice that um, you know, who was gonna win that one. Yes, now, United States Championship changing hands. Of course, people were saying that the SmackDown Raw changeover made that a factor that had to happen. So you're now looking maybe at the Del Rio Christian thing, where, again, this belt maybe has to go to SmackDown with Christian. It's kind of obvious. I mean, that's what, that's, what is, uh, that's what made WWE, like, you know, kind of for them to be stupid, they could have done uh, to make it more, make it more of us guessing. They should have done uh, Wade Barrett to Raw, and uh, they should have done Miz to SmackDown. We will speak to you again. Thanks again for being there. Thanks, and Mike. Mike, as I say, our correspondent here. We have uh, Skype callers all around the place watching. It's always good to hear thoughts from our loyal peeps. And the wrestled up HQ. I called it. I called. You absolutely. I think did. Did you call that one the new U.S. champion? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And that's contender for match of the night. That's it. I have to give it to you. We have that recorded. You putting that one over. A surprise addition to the card, but. You know, it was said that maybe the belts had to change over, and uh, maybe that's exactly what's happened. Uh, Kofi going forward, uh, I think you're a big fan. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, you yes. seem happy about that one. Yeah, it's a good, it's good stuff for Kofi. You know, he's had a good run when you think about it. How many times has he held this U.S. Championship now? Is that his third, possibly? Third Taking his, his third reign. That's good stuff out of Kofi, in fairness, you know? It absolutely is. Now, country whipping match is on the way. It's uh, ongoing, as we've seen plenty of that country whipping so far. Cole now getting in the ring with that bubble wrap. And uh, as regards this one, did you have high hopes or, I suppose, was it one you were looking forward to? Uh, I'm right down the mill. Someone tell me, like, you shouldn't be paying to him like someone else tell me. Yeah. Yes, someone yes. else tell me I, sh I should watch this. I know what you're saying. Opinion is divided. Very much so. And uh, I think uh, people are kind of like, well, is it a good angle? Or, you know, maybe the younger fans aren't as into this because for me, it's all about the Lawler. JR kind of sell if you like where they are old school guys that kind of they want to make this shoot and I was saying earlier that maybe last uh, Monday on Raw you had that time where you knew they were trying to sell it and the punch it did it really like saying before having a black guy is not glamorous <laughs> it happened to me for real <laughs> <laughs> and swagger uh, rushed up the card <laughs> Do you think uh, Swagger's got a legit chance of being a WWE champion by the end of the year? Give it a couple of more. Give it a couple more years, and he'll have his second world title. There's very similarities to my childhood, but because 
the fact that I, I get a belt to my ass. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think, yeah, maybe even in J.O.'s past, I mean, the schools back then, well, here they were crazy, but uh, that's another story. It does happen. Absolutely. Misbehaving. The, uh, Swagger now grabbing J.O.R. He's got him by the throat, and a low blow, a flare-like low blow from J.O.R. Ooh. on Swagger. Continue. I will indeed. And now the whip's laid down on the back of Swagger, and here's Cole with the roll-up. That's a three count. This Cole, one's over. This Cole one's in the Swagger. bag. Sorry if we're on a time delay, Sonic. Uh, Sorry. We shouldn't be calling them out. <laughs> two, yeah, two and three quarters out of five. That's a quick call. I'm going to say 2.2. 2. Absolutely. I think this is a match that went over nicely. It wasn't too long. A lot of people complained that that WrestleMania Cole Lawler thing was a little bit on the long side. This was a little bit shorter. It took a while for JR to get into the ring. But when it uh, happened, business certainly did pick up. In this case, uh, Swagger coming out strong. A lot of comedy spots in here. The whips and uh, good effect and... Ultimately, I think this went over nicely. Another good uh, match on that kind of medium scale. I'd go with maybe 3.5 out of 5. 3.5? Yeah, I'm going to turn it. Yes, it's, yeah, it's better than the WrestleMania match. Way better than the WrestleMania match. I liked what I saw from JR there when he was kind of freaking out, I have to say. Um you know, he uh, it's a side I don't think you ever really see of him or that we have ever seen of him. When uh, he's, he was trying legit wrestling moves, he was firing Cole into the turnbuckle, bouncing his head off the turnbuckle, firing clotheslines, crazy-ass stuff out of uh, JR. And I don't think he was too happy to, to go under here tonight. I don't think anyone's going to lose sleep or get too upset about the whole situation. But I'm going to give this one... I'm going to bring it down to about... I'll probably turn it back up, actually. I'm going to go 3.1 on this one. Good call. Absolutely, Sonic. Thank you again. And we'll let you get back to your pay-per-view now. We don't want to keep you here all night. So hopefully we'll maybe speak to you soon. and uh, get Oh, more it's still be in chat. Excellent. So thank you very much. And uh, there again Thanks. is Sonic. We just saw a very quick, somewhat quick, country-whipping match. Uh, hi to Lil Jabba. We don't want to forget people in the chat room. Cena cutting a promo, of course. And Mac Attack 90, uh, maybe you should have picked an actual wrestler as your partner. Uh, talking to the king there. Uh, I don't give two shits about that match. I didn't. Um, if I, The only way I would have wanted that match to actually entertain me is if uh, Cole would have uh, gotten his uh, ass beaten. Or at least whipped. At least a million times. <laughs> But um, it didn't happen, and uh, Cole with the freaking roll-up for the win, and I'm not even giving that a rating because I don't give a shit about that. That's right. They're, they're sort of saving the big-time beating, aren't they? That's going to be maybe a little while. We've got to wait for that. They know we're looking for it. Uh, you know, you want to see almost like with, with McMahon when he was tired and feathered. You know, you want to really humiliate Cole and send him out then and maybe finish could, the angle. Yeah, they can drive this one out, I think, for another couple of weeks. I have to say again, I'm enjoying this far more than a WrestleMania. Now, I know we expect a lot from that big pay-per-view, but it's something I think happens quite regularly. You have these smaller shows that deliver solid matches and, you know, this has been all wrestling apart from some you know shortish segments they certainly haven't done that old you know promo in the ring for 10 minutes unexpected mm. i mean i'd rather uh, a seamus kofi thing uh than that and here comes uh is he still dashing not anymore yeah i keep no, saying, they're dashing, not saying yeah. dashing. <laughs> just just cody Rhodes. just cody Rhodes. uh we just got done watching uh Rey Mysterio versus Cody Rhodes uh, here, Extreme Rules. Uh, watching it right now here live on Justin.tv slash WrestleDope. Um, it was a good match. It started off really quick. Um, got outside the ring really quick, up uh, into the crowd, up the stairs in the concession area near a bar area. Um, I was expecting 
high spots, and uh, there were high spots in this match all the way through the end, and a uh, very, very surprising ending. Uh, no one would have expected what happened. A bit of a nod to Tajiri, as you said, where you had that uh, green <laughs> mist sprayed out of uh, Mysterio's mouth. So is the guy becoming heel? Uh, uh, that seems like the actions of uh, an evil guy. And actually, well, he there looks, is a smile yeah. on the face. But as you say, yeah, there is a bit of sinister. a heelish look. Yeah, sinister smile, I'd say. My God, if it was a Ray Mysterio heel turn right there if it was if he if he no then again you see him and you know he's baby he's, face he's, whatever, he's giving he? the thumbs up to the kids and he'll be banging heads with the kids next week on his way down so talking about that match my thoughts on that uh, well uh, you know, I've always been a fan of uh, Mysterio Rhodes and in this case we had a lot of the arena stuff saved for their match now they could have done it for that last man standing the Punk Orton could have spilled out further but it was nicely kept and uh, they brought it to the concession stand here as uh, those two battled out there that to me one of the highlights and then of course brought back through the crowd the crowd very much into it and very much a part of it as well always the case uh, when you take that camera to those WWE fans that was one of the many good things about this again a match where about halfway through I was talking that it's worth four out of five and I'm going to stick with that mm. I think when you have a falls can anywhere match you always expect it to spill to the outside which it did um, sometimes they don't go too hectic with it but I do like when like you say when they go back to the the stands where they sell the popcorn and the merch stuff and yeah. good spots back there more importantly sometimes it's just a few whips into walls and you know safe enough stuff but they were doing some funny stuff back there with Mysterio flipping off the counter and again back down through the crowd you know we didn't see a car park we didn't see a parking lot we didn't see anything too crazy and uh, surprisingly not too much stuff happening up on the ramp although a nice west coast pop or whatever you call that move mike i think you named it there sent on or some sort of deal from the ramp from mysterio on cody Rhodes. i thought cody was going to go over here tonight i didn't see mysterio paying tribute to uh some of the old schoolers with the green mist by any yeah, means coming but a nice finish to it um I don't know if it'll affect Cody going forwards. I'm sure that mask protected him. I don't know even know how that mist got into his eyes if he had that mask on. But that's a whole other story. It is Extreme Rules and Rey Mysterio comes out victorious. I'm going to give this one very solid 4.2. Uh, I give it. I was giving it a 3.5 until that very end. Uh, that very, you know, swerving end with the mist and all that. Uh, I'll give it around uh, like a four, uh, definitely a four out of five for that one too. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, my prediction was wrong, however, but I still, like I said, I enjoyed it. It was a very good match. Drifter is with us live so far. Some quite solid matches in uh, my opinion. What would you say? Have you uh, any ratings, any thoughts on the, the card so far? You know, I've been uh, pleasantly surprised uh, so far, I gotta say. Yeah, it's been strong in fairness, I think. You know, just overall on it. Um, mm. I had uh, the old fella across the street, he showed up to come visit my dad, so and he's a big old-time wrestling fan, right? So I just sat him down, went out of the chat room for a bit, just me and him were watching it, you know what I mean? Excellent. It's always nice to get the, the old school fans' take on stuff. And Did he kind of enjoy it? Was it uh, reminiscent of, of, of his wrestling, if you like? Um... Well, his wrestling, he started watching back in the Attitude Era. And uh, even though he's an older guy, like in his late 50s, that's when he started to watch wrestling because he enjoyed guys like Stone Cold and The Rock and things of that nature. Mm. Um, but he still likes it now. And, uh, yeah, he was having fun with it. We got a little bit pissed off because the stream we had uh, kind of cut out at the uh, finish of Orton and Cena, so, or sorry, Orton and Punk, so we didn't get to see that. But we, you know, I found another place to watch it, and it's been been fantastic since. Good stuff. Excellent. So listen, stay with us if you like. We will uh, keep your uh, reactions on an ongoing uh, pay-per-view that we're sitting here watching. If you are joining us on uh, justin.tv slash WrestleDope. It's Michelle McCool, Layla, and just to keep you updated, uh, right now Layla in uh, control, if you like. And, uh, yeah, a pin on Michelle McCool. So, so far, some solid matches. Picking out maybe Orton and Punk. Uh, I thought that was good. It was long, but it didn't lose my interest. 
No, I, I thought it was a great match. Um, putting it on first probably was a good move, actually. Hmm. I think so, too. I quite like the second match, looking back, actually. The Kofi and Sheamus, I thought, maybe on a second glance, was a, a bit stronger. Yeah, you see, and remember I mentioned the Sheamus match and no one knew about it? And yeah, I didn't even know. Ago, we have I didn't even know it was on the card. Was it a late edition or was it announced today or had it been up there for a couple of days? I remember hearing about it a few days ago, oh, really? but I didn't see it on the actual website. Oh. That's it. They do take a while to, to get these things updated. And now we have uh, McCool laid out on that security barrier. And Layla very close to the crowd, of course. Uh, yeah, she's certainly somebody who gets close to the fans, and this is extreme. And they always have to do a lot to make a Divas match extreme. She just pulled Michelle McCool off that barrier with her hair. We've just seen the conclusion of uh, Layla v. Michelle McCool. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it went down quite quickly. But overall, uh, I suppose not too much to say. But ultimately, Layla going over is... To me, a good thing. I'm uh, glad to see that she's finally going to get a good push. I think this could be the start of a good babyface uh, reign for her. And I think the crowd will react well to her now. They're much more familiar since that lay cool angle. We mentioned here live in the chat room about how long uh, that lay cool angle has gone. It's important. And, uh, yeah, implosion is, is a good payoff. It is, yeah. I think it's a good, a good thing for Layla. She's definitely going to come out the better with this whole deal because really if anything the whole Lay Cool situation has only helped build both of them I think McCool would have been okay either way because of her status with certain folk um, but for Layla being the underdog a little bit at least she got to showcase with you know someone who can really drive it home and that is Michelle McCool and I suppose having uh, Layla do what she does best, and I think that is her mic work, um, being highly on display over the last couple of months, showing that she can really drive it home, and that uh, you know she would be a safe bet to um, go forward for a chance maybe at that belt. Finally, I'm going to give it 2.8. I'm going to give it that sort of a medium score as we now see Karma on the Titan Tron. Of course, this is probably a good good way to go Michelle McCool v Karma the anticipated debut so the rating on this one I'm gonna go as I say 2.8 Drifter do I ask do you like uh, giving these Divas matches ratings um what are we rating in about a 5 well I'm gonna go out of 5 and I'm pretty much on the 2.8 deal I think yeah I would give it uh, half you know it was a decent little divas match well she looks more or less tna you know she's got uh, the awesome kong gimmick that's uh, a leather dress karma making her debut i know dave birmingham waiting for this one for a long time <laughs> as well as we see her make her way and now climbing up to enter the ring and uh, does that mean then yeah i mean uh, michelle mccool and karma going forward maybe well it's a good way to handle karma i think if cool is going to take an extended holiday or a full time well that's my theory on i think karma's here to put her out for good for a little while right what a match it was a ladder match usually these matches are well tough rough and tough and uh, this is a place where they can't uh, hide behind well punches that didn't connect and in this <laughs> case we've seen ladders used to great effect quite early taken into play and indeed I have to give it to Christian in particular you can see all sorts of marks down his body uh, you know I said during this these are the moments that people realize that wrestling is real at least the pain side of things we talked earlier could it be Edge coming back could it be Jericho it looks like Edge has uh, come out here and Christian takes that belt yeah Christian absolute workhorse I think since he came back to WWE for this uh, run since he's TNA days and it's paid off um, over and over again we saw him buried and buried he had his ECW title and um, I don't think anyone ever saw this really coming so soon but it's a good thing for Christian and uh, yeah he's absolutely broke up I think from the match that just was some seriously crazy bumps taken by Christian and uh, not afraid to 
put his body on the line, I think, more so than Del Rio on this one. And I uh, actually thought Christian did a great job here tonight and as well deserve it. Let's see what he can do going forward. Very good, solid match. Very messy uh, with the blood side of things. Everybody was firing blood out there. And um, even Brodus Clay. Even Brodus Clay. There's a big pool of blood by that. There edges, absolutely uh, is. And I said it, it looks a bit more like the ketchup side of things than the JR and Cole on Raw last week. But I still think it's good that they've made the decision to show it. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's one thing in the chat room. People said that can we see blood in a PG era? Well, it looks like on pay-per-view at least we most certainly can. Now, they're very much playing this uh, Christian win as we see replays of him grabbing that belt. And I honestly, I'm positive about what this could mean. I think a refreshed push... A guy who can uh, easily slot into the edge position. I'm just going to quickly give this a rating. And I'm going to go... I think it's time for the, the 4.5s out of 5 here. 4.5, that's a, that's a big one. I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to go 4.0 on this one. I think... Uh, a little bit laggy in parts, I will say. I, I don't know what it was, but... Um, maybe just for the fact that they gave him the shot and let gonna let him run with the belt for how long who knows but it is he's now and uh, i'm sure edge is proud i'm sure christian's a happy man an amazing moment for christian drifter i have to hear your thoughts on this of course edge uh, i know a favorite of yours and with a guy like christian in the mix it's got to be a good moment for yourself well <clears throat> i thought it was a solid match um you know it was a decent ladder match and, and i think christian definitely uh made it so I don't think uh, Del Rio sucked in it at all. I thought he, he was looking pretty good and pretty strong. And the match itself kept me guessing, you know, who was going to win. So when a match keeps you guessing about who, who's going to win, then you know it's a good match. Uh, when you can almost predict it too much, it's, it's not as fun, right? So they, they did keep me guessing on a couple of parts. Now, um, Christian obviously being a Canadian guy, so right away that, that gives him an extra point, you know? <laughs> I'll go 4.5 because I'm glad the Canadian took it and uh, the Canadian contingency continues and lives long. WWE Extreme Rules has just finished and uh, there's the outcome that we've seen so many times on so many pay-per-views. John Cena winning that WWE Championship and uh, some stuff tomorrow to do on Raw as he uh, meets The Rock. Uh, first time, of course, uh, in a couple of weeks, so that angle... He's going to move on, of course, his hometown, so let's see what happens. Yep, I don't think anyone saw Cena as the one who would walk out tonight with the belt. A lot of people said Morrison, most people said The Miz, but uh, all of those people were wrong. And John Cena, he's got the belt, he's ready for WrestleMania 28. Is that where we're at these days? Indeed it is. And time just flies, doesn't it? Um, yeah, Cena's got the belt again. C-Nation rules again. And unfortunately for The Miz... Uh, A-Rai's gone his belt is gone what the future holds remains to be seen Jomo he's got some issues with Truth and uh, Cena and Rock the road to WrestleMania begins Or Truth involved in this match interrupting removed earlier this week and I think everybody here in the chat room said that they expected to see the guy in there and indeed he played a big part in taking Morrison out of course Morrison was a big uh, you know sort of push in this match he he did kind of do a lot in it and uh not as dazzling as maybe we might have thought but i think they kept all three guys grounded now there wasn't uh, a lot of room to breathe in here they uh, did have some spots where all three were flat on the mat selling uh whatever had gone on but things like double suplexes off the cage morrison and cena uh taking miz uh, all the way over and onto his back. Again, everybody tonight really sold. And uh, I'm sure there was a lot of painful moments suffered by a lot of these guys. This pay-per-view, again, has impressed me. Now, I've always enjoyed pay-per-views that are a little bit smaller. Mania went off in a different direction and it was rubbish. But this time, we're talking about a solid 4.5 out of 5 for a great, great pay-per-view. Definitely stepped up from WrestleMania and it was well needed. I think everybody got a chance to shine and the focus definitely was on the wrestling side of things as opposed to uh, what WrestleMania, whatever that was all about. Yeah, um, in the end, I would probably give it a 4.0 out of 5. Very strong. Christian, happy for the guy who finally got that big time shot and he delivered. 
and he is the new world heavyweight champion. Edge is a happy man. Christian's a happy man. Poor old Berto del Rio. The destiny, one more time, has been destroyed. But for how long? Now, sadly, tonight on Justin.tv, for some reason, they cut the stream off. Now, we don't uh, put out any copyright material. We don't uh, broadcast the event. We always make that very, very clear to everybody uh, in Stamford, Connecticut. It was about a year ago, actually, our first pay-per-view live reactions where they cut us off. And uh, maybe they could hear some pay-per-view audio that time. A year later, and... It's never happened to us since. For some reason, those mods at Justin.tv, despite a year of putting content up here, decided we were to be closed. Yeah, a little unfair from the Justin guys there tonight, I have to say. Especially when there's other guys streaming the stuff as clear as day, as blatant and as obvious with the big extreme rules. Subject in the in the title and uh, all we're doing is just talking about it really and not putting anything that we shouldn't be putting out just the two of us talking about wrestling with our peeps in the chat room and uh yeah i don't know why we were pulled but there you go hopefully we might get an explanation from them if not maybe it's time to uh look somewhere else sling our hook as they might say a uh, 24-hour ban from justin and we didn't broadcast anything we shouldn't have, but uh, I think often you just have these mods. Uh, maybe they've had, uh, you know, they've had a long shift, and they just say, "Right, we'll cancel that." Trigger happy. Trigger happy. Cut them off. Ultimately, anyway, Justin TV uh, have really now upset us tonight. Stamford, Connecticut, obviously involved in this. And I think, as you said, it's time maybe to head on over to Ustream, perhaps live stream. That's the up and coming uh, streaming site. So all of you guys checking it out who maybe got cut off on the night, we apologize. It wasn't our fault. It was, in fact, Justin.tv, who in their infinite wisdom decided that we were copyright material.